Out along the Mississippi in the Bywater District of New Orleans lies the Music Box Village. This is conceptually a very long way from the tourists in the French Quarter. A collection of musical houses containing handmade, one-of-a-kind instruments, the installation was created as part of the Airlift Project. The Music Box is a fascinating place where imagination, experimentation, collaboration and community can come together. How you doing? Nice to see you. I'm Jeff nice you too. from the World of Sound Project. Right on. And um, we're super excited to be here at the Music Box Village. Awesome. We're glad to have you. Yeah. We live in Oakland, so we're kind of used to these sort of like quasi-industrial spaces, right? Yeah. And so as soon as I walked in, I was like, oh, this place is awesome. Because um, it feels, it feels like, like home. Yeah, yeah. It's got a similar vibe. Uh, so the Music Box Village, which is the last iteration of this project, uh, is something that started in 2009. Yeah. And it was uh, the birth of, the rebirth of a... Uh, Creole cottage that had been uh, sort of gently collapsed to the ground mm -hmm. uh, by our hands uh, that was next door to my house. And what we came up with was uh, a musical house. New Orleans is a musical place. Mm -hmm. Seemed natural to have, you know, architecture and music fold on top of each other. Um, encourage collaborations between visual artists, builders, musical instrument inventors yeah. around the idea of the ways in which houses are musical places right. you know so right. like your house is a musical place right. like it or not we did some shows they were crazy successful we had no idea it would be that interesting yeah. we brought in a conductor Quintron and we, and we brought in a bunch of other musicians and started to have these performances that were like sort of a orchestral conducted thing so you've got a guy in the middle or a person in the middle conducting, and you've got people in all the different houses, and, really? they're, so, and they're sort of, and the conductor's sort of the, like you, you, yeah. you, yeah. And you, and with some engagement and, to direct, and direction. And for our conducted performances, it can be very broad. In the case of Ardo Lindsay from uh, Brazil, who wow, came and really? performed, yeah, wow. he did. Uh, he had you know everything from African drummers from Ashe Cultural Center here in New Orleans to uh, Solange Knowles. Um, and the the gist of it is always to do that, to sort of bring together like what's strong about New Orleans and what's strong about the outside world. But he also included uh, an all-female motorcycle club that we work with called okay. the Caramel Curves. Awesome. He included a horse riding club called 504 Boys, which rode through the performance on these like dressed out horses and right. doing like all kinds of ballet, yeah. horse ballet, um, and a, and a full-blown brass band from New Orleans that right. marched through the town just as you would see in the streets of New right. Orleans. So. It's asking artists to be challenged. It's asking audiences to be challenged, yeah. you know? So when you come to see Gogo Bordello, you're not gonna hear all their hits, yeah. you know, which is okay. Like, you know, maybe you wanna hear that, but I'm not gonna tell them. If yeah. they wanna play that, they play that. If yeah. they don't wanna play that, they don't play that. But in the case of their show here, it was a 100th anniversary of Dada as an art movement right. combined with a spaghetti western. Okay, that's awesome. Then we'll have shows that are, you know, uh, very different. We had Tank and the Bangas who are local, and they wrote a musical, basically, mm -hmm. around the idea of Alice in Wonderland. Mm -hmm. So it was like a retelling of Alice in Wonderland wow. featuring Big Frida as mm -hmm. the Queen of Hearts wow. and, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, other uh, yeah. uh, Black Magic Drumline, which is this amazing drumline yeah. full of musicians here, and sort of telling a narrative story. So it, it's pretty broad, you know, I mean, it, it could really be everything from a play or a We've had uh, uh, sort of a radio drama that was staged here where all of the um, houses were sort of the, the you know, sound effects for a radio drama, okay. you know, and then if, yeah. you, and if you couldn't get in to that show, you could go to the park down the street and there was an FM broadcast okay. playing at the park, right. so you could just listen to yeah. a radio drama with another yeah. thousand people. Spillover audience. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you can talk through this, or you can play an instrument through it. You can talk through this, play an instrument through it. You can uh, plug in down here with a guitar or whatever you want to do. When you go up, the speaker overhead spins. You can speed it up, you can slow it down, but when you talk through it, there's your voice around. So it's also a chance for us, you know, That's wonderful. in what we do to sort of teach principles of like conventional instruments to people through like secondary yeah. Yeah. secondary means, yeah. you know. Yeah. It's about how you organize sound that makes music, not mm -hmm. about, you know, the sounds itself. We call the Shake House for two reasons. One, uh, it has like uh, these lower, um, subwoofer tones that, that it generates. You know, switch that over, uh, make a make a loop out of it. We've got a sort of cam-based sequencer. We've got in here a graphic representation in the form of an oscilloscope showing you the sound itself that you're making. So you can 
sort of follow along visually with the sounds that you're making. And then, you know, there's a lot of different ways to modulate. All these switches come with no labels because we don't necessarily want people to uh, figure it out. To sort of add percussion, we've got these sort of yeah. instruments and then a bigger, bigger instrument. So it's shake house because it shakes in a lot of different ways. For me, it's an instrument that uh, can never be played the same way twice, which is kind of awesome and also kind of terrifying. This place is amazing. It's like a total, like, wild playground of sound. It's just incredible. A sort of compression hor horn based instrument that uses invented uh, instruments. What you're hearing is not the squeaking of these actual things, but the squeaking of these pieces of wood that are mic'd. Really cool slide. Come in here. These are like weird electrified kalimbas. It's like a weird electronic zither. You can swing back and forth on it. You can get all weird with it. Did this thing shoot fire? Nothing shoots fire. Okay, I thought I saw some pulls for like fire. No, no, no. no I, wish, but I wish. I wish. <laughs> I love fire. That's a we love, thing. Yeah, we love yeah. fire, yeah. but we also uh, we loved kids. Yeah. All this stuff was literally built in like a day. <laughs> we we took possession of the property back in April, and we didn't even break ground until August. So we've really only been here for about seven or eight months. We know we feel like we're in a really good place here in terms of being surrounded by noise that already exists. We have boats, we have right. trains, we have all these other things that make us sort of just one more element in a broader sort of musical palette that is going on. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah, when we have shows and the trains come through, it's not interruptive, it's just there's the, there's the sound of the train, you know? Yeah. It adds to the show. Yeah. We just try to keep it, every performance slightly different than the one before and always kind of pushing artists to sort of challenge themselves a little bit. One thing that's a big deal for us is that, you know, not every experiment is a success. Yeah. And we don't try to put our artists up to, like, total success at, under any circumstances. Right. You know? Maybe more process-oriented than product. Yeah. Room to fail and to fail gloriously in a yeah. way. Yeah. I mean, it's such a beautiful thing, you know, because so much of the arts is kind of product. You know, you've got to hit it hard. It's got to be amazing. The product is... Yeah, it's, the product's already here. Yeah. And we, you have a little room, a little, you know, room to kind of stretch out a little bit. Yeah. 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 It's a rare and beautiful thing. So we try to do everything we can to, like, you know, make it easy on people and to prepare our audiences for yeah. an unconventional performance. Right. Period. It's yeah, always it's kind of site-specific. Yeah. You know, that you've already entered into a kind of a realm of, like, the sus suspension of disbelief by even just coming in here. Exactly. Then we also have, you know, open hours on weekends. We don't have shows and stuff. And that is where the real challenge of it becomes apparent to the people who come and play it. So adults, kids, everybody comes around and just plays these things all day. Yeah. And you learn through that process how hard it is for these musicians to create completely outside of their thing as well. Right. Which gives you another level of sympathy. You have to you know, interact with the pieces that are already here. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So you know, it's this idea of, you know, larger sort of projects that are focused on actual engagement yeah. is I think becoming more and more common. And, yeah. uh, you know, happy to be a part of it. For yeah. us, it's, you know, if anybody else wants to take this idea in their own way and run with it we're not the kind to to feel precious about it we you know we feel like every one of these kinds of installations has its own story to tell based on the architecture of the places it goes into and the musical history of the places that it goes into and that's just really what we're about you know sort of explaining to people is that you know music and sound is far more than what comes through your radio you exactly know, that it's literally just in your life it's at every moment of and your a life. lot of people don't really um, realize that you anybody can play music like it's you know like this kind of rarefied thing like mm -hmm. concert hall sort of vibe where you sit mm -hmm. and you listen and then the guy plays it's you know it's an interactive 
you know, it's communal, an ongoing on, language. Yeah, exactly. It's an ongoing communication. Even in New Orleans, just the way somebody says hello to you on the street yeah. has a musical sure. intonation and a musical quality to it, and it's woven through everything. And so we're just really trying to give that life, you know, here yeah. in a more, uh, in a more sort of, you know, a little bit more of a fine art kind of mm -hmm. kind of stance. Yeah, you know. Yeah, so, just raise it up a little bit. Yeah, yeah but so. still be extremely accessible to people who don't necessarily have music as their core at their right. core. You know. Right. So. Right. Well, congratulations. It's just Thanks. fantastic. I appreciate I'm it. I'm really proud to have met you, and yeah. just, I wish you the best and so much success here. Thanks so much. It's I appreciate really, it. Thanks really for good. coming out. Yeah, it's great. Thank you yeah. for having us. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you.